Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Since we have launched Super Intelligent, a platform for helping people learn AI through fun, fast tutorials, we sometimes have the chance to get previews of new AI software that's coming out a couple days in advance of when the general public sees it. Yesterday, we got to check out Adobe's new Firefly 3 inside of Photoshop. And to give you a sense of how good it is, the first message I got from my tutorial creator who was on the call was that it might even be better than Midjourney. Now, I haven't had enough time to dig into it to make any sort of bold proclamation like that, but the takeaway is certainly that it is a serious contender. So what are we talking about? Well, Photoshop, the best known photo editing software in the world for many, many years at this point, many decades at this point, has now gotten a set of generative AI upgrades, including the latest version of Adobe's Firefly image model, Firefly Image 3. In addition to being embedded in Photoshop, Firefly Image 3 will also be a standalone web app, but it seems likely to me that a lot of people will have their first experiences of it directly inside of Photoshop. Now for Adobe, they were always going to continue to try to improve their image generation models, but this also really does represent a chance to solve specific problems inside of Photoshop. In other words, according to Adobe, this isn't just putting in generative AI for the sake of generative AI. Said Zeke Koch, the Adobe VP of Generative AI Product Management, what we noticed when we looked at all these new people who were coming into Photoshop is that they were getting stuck on this empty page problem. So we gave them the ability to generate images, full text to images, because once you have your image in Photoshop, all of a sudden you can use all the tools that we already have in Photoshop to make it better. Now you might remember that last year, in May, Adobe premiered a feature that they called Generative Fill. Basically, users were able to highlight a portion of an existing image and use a text prompt to modify that particular section of an image. An example that they give in one article is removing a cowboy's lasso from a photo and instead replacing it with spaghetti. Now, this feature has become sort of table stakes for other image generators over the last year, but the new version in Firefly 3 has a bunch of new features that makes it more powerful. One of them, for example, is a reference image where once you've made your selection of the part of the photo that you want to modify, you can use not only text to update the selection, but also a reference image that the model will try to reference alongside your text prompt. Adobe is also launching something they call Generate Background, which is exactly what it sounds like, a simpler ability to generate a new background around a particular object of focus. This, as you might imagine, is going to be extremely useful for marketers who need to put their product images in various settings. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There is a lot more in this product that I, for one, am certainly very excited to dig in on. If you are interested in seeing it in practice, we actually do have tutorials up on Super Intelligent right now. You can find them at bsuper.ai. There will also be a code for a discount in the ad that follows the brief. Next up, however, in the brief, Apple has made yet another quiet AI acquisition. This time, it's a Paris-based startup called Data Collab. Writes Mac rumors, Data Collab specializes in algorithmic compression and embedded AI systems. The company was established in 2016 and made significant strides in AI technology focusing on low-power, high-efficiency deep learning algorithms that function without relying on cloud-based systems. Obviously, if you've been paying attention to Apple's moves to get their LLMs to run entirely on device rather than in the cloud, the acquisition just on the face of it makes sense. So for more information, we once again have to wait until WWDC coming in June. Speaking of small models, Microsoft has launched the Phi 3, which is its smallest AI model yet. The Verge writes, the company released Phi 2 in December, which performed just as well as bigger models like Llama 2. Microsoft says Phi 3 performs better than the previous version and can provide responses close to how a model 10 times bigger than it can. Now, this is, of course, is a reminder that it is not just Apple who is interested in models that can run on device, be it phones or laptops. And even as the race for the state of the art continues on the large model side, all of these companies are also trying to make the most performance small models for these different types of use cases. Lastly, reports that SoftBank is set to invest nearly a billion dollars in their own AI push. One of the trends that we're seeing right now is companies racing to build highly performant LLMs that are built around non-English languages. CNBC writes that SoftBank is looking to develop a world-class Japanese-language-specific artificial intelligence model and plans to spend about a billion dollars on the compute to do so. This is the type of trend that I expect to continue in basically every major language market. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Next up, the main AI Breakdown.